Hello students, today we are going to discuss the topics transcription, types of RNAs and genetic code. Till now we have studied that how DNA forms other DNA that is how DNA replicates. Now today we are going to study that how DNA forms RNA. Now let us see where the transcription that is formation of RNA from DNA takes place. As you can see in the picture the transcription it takes place in the nucleus where the DNA forms RNA. Let us have a detailed meaning of the transcription is a making a copy of genetic information stored in a DNA strand into a complementary strand of RNA with the help of RNA polymerase. It is based on the principle of complementarity rule. As you can clearly see in the picture where the complementary rule it means the A pairs with T and G pairs with C. Now there is a very important question in our mind that out of the two DNA strands why only one DNA strand is transcribed. Now let us go into the detail of that. If both the strands are copied the RNA molecule will have different sequences. So we will have two different proteins. Another important thing the formation of double stranded RNA. So that will prevent the protein synthesis. Now since we know that the DNA has two strands. How we are going to name the two strands? The two strands are named as a template strand and coding strand. So what is the rule of defining the two strands? Now we know the DNA has antiparallel polarity 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime. The RNA polymerase it transcribes in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime. So Therefore, the tampit strand is the one which has the polarity from 3 prime to 5 prime and the coding strand has the polarity from 5 prime to 3 prime. Is it not surprising the strand that we call the coding strand is the one which is not transcribed though it is called a coding strand. On the other hand the one which is transcribed is called the tampit strand. Let us see why. The following diagram shows the two strands with opposite polarity. Now to understand that why the coding strand is not transcribed and only the template strand is transcribed let us take a hypothetical sequence. As the figure shows there is a 3 prime to 5 prime the two strands and 5 prime to 3 prime. Now if the strand which is 3 prime to 5 prime a T G C A T G C A C A T. When if it is transcribed, the sequence of the bases becomes U A C G U A C T U and G U A. Now what do you observe? Now you can see that between the five prime to three prime strand, the two strand five prime to three prime. T A C G T A C G T G T A and U A C G U A C G U and G U A. Only the difference between these two strand is that in place of thymine there is U that is uracil. Otherwise the sequence is exactly similar. So therefore it is the template one which is transcribed and the one which is the coding strand is not transcribed. Then why it is called the coding strand? It is called the coding strand because it is coding the sequence which is present in the messenger RNA. So therefore we have the two strands the template which is transcribed and the coding which is not transcribed. Now let us see what are the materials required. The first very important enzyme is the RNA polymerase a DNA template then four types of ribonucleoside triphosphate corresponding to two purines and two pyrimidines then magnesium and manganese ions as cofactors but a very important thing here is no primer is needed which was needed in the DNA replication. Now let us see what a transcription unit consists of. There are three important regions in the transcription unit promoter, 
the structural genes and the terminator. Now if you look into the picture of the DNA strand, you can see the promoter region where the RNA polymerase comes and bind, the RNA coding region and the terminator region where the transcription terminates or stops. So there are two strands, 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime. The promoter site is located at the 5 prime end, whereas the terminator is located on the 3 prime end. Now let us see what are the important steps in the transcription process. The first step is the initiation. Now these include the binding of RNA polymerase to DNA duplex. During this process, the histone coat is removed, the DNA polynucleotide sequence is removed, the RNA polymerase binds to promoter which is recognized by sigma factor and there is a formation of transcription initiation complex. Now you can look into the picture and you can see that how the initiation process is taking place and the RNA polymerase has bound to the promoter region. The following diagram shows the sigma factor in the prokaryotes. The sigma factor is the initiation factor that binds with the RNA polymerase and starts the initiation process. But in the case of eukaryotes, during the formation of transcription initiation complex, we have called regulatory sequences and then a general transcription apparatus which have a TATAA box where the RNA polymerase comes and binds. Another very important feature that you can observe is the presence of introns and exons. The introns are the regions which are non-coding. On the other hand, exons are the regions which are the coding sequence of the RNA. So during the initiation process, the RNA bases are exposed and the RNA polymerase moves along the DNA. There is a local unwinding of DNA strand. This which is clearly can be seen in the picture, the winding and the unwinding of the two DNA strands. After initiation process, elongation process starts. The DNA helix open, the nucleotides are added. The RNA polymerase which binds to the promoter region moves on and forms ribonucleotides. The next picture shows the rho factor. The rho factor is a terminator factor which helps in the termination of the RNA nucleotide chain. The picture shows the rho factor has been dissociated and the nascent RNA has been moved out of the DNA. So the termination process is complete. The RNA polymerase then leaves the DNA and the RNA molecule is released. The termination process is complete. So RNA polymerase comes out along with the rho factor. So let's have an overview of the transcription process. The first the initiation which takes place with the help of sigma factor, then elongation where the RNA nucleotides are added and the termination where the rho factor terminates the process. We go into the eukaryotic DNA then you can very well see here that the eukaryotic DNA is not as simple as in the case of prokaryote. Now what do you observe in the eukaryote? In the eukaryotes you can see the intervening regions, the exons and the introns and that make the process more complicated. The RNA which is formed in the eukaryotes, this is a heterogeneous RNA which is formed inside the nucleus. This heterogeneous RNA is non-functional. To make it functional, this RNA comes out from the nucleus into the cytoplasm where further modifications are required. Now let us see what are the different modifications which take place in eukaryotic RNA. So in eukaryotic transcription, there are three modifications. So eukaryotic mRNA undergoes RNA processing which is pre-translational modifications which is prior to the translation process and these modifications are capping, tailing and splicing. Now let us see each type of modifications. The first one is the capping. The 5 prime end of the mRNA transcript has a guanine nucleotide added during the elongation and this is called capping. 
The second modification is polyadenylation. At termination, the protein removes the mRNA transcript and adds about 200 adenines to the 3 prime ant and this is called polyadenylation. And the third modification is the splicing. The capped and the polyadenylated mRNA is called pre-messenger RNA. The introns that we have seen, these are the junk sequences and they separate usable portions which are the expressed one and that we call the exons. So, it is now necessary to remove the introns and get the functional RNA and this process is called the splicing. This is done by ribozymes. Now, let us see with the help of a picture how the splicing take place. So, one that you can see on the top is the pre mRNA having the introns and the exons alternately. In the next step, you can see a bubble type structures which are the spliceosomes. So, the introns they are bubble, they form the spliceosomes, they are cut and ultimately you get a mature mRNA having only the exons. So, the next diagram this clearly shows that how the primary RNA transcript get transformed into a mature mRNA. So, the mature mRNA that is the transcript it contains only the functional exons which is expressed. Now, let us see the differences between the prokaryotic transcription and eukaryotic transcription. In prokaryote the transcription occurs in cytoplasm on the other hand in eukaryote it occurs in the nucleus. In prokaryote there is only one RNA polymerase. On the other hand in eukaryote there are three RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3. In prokaryote the RNA is released and processed in the cytoplasm and the transcription unit one or more genes. On the other hand in eukaryote there is only one gene. The primary transcript is functional in the case of prokaryote. On the other hand in eukaryote heterogeneous mRNA needs further modifications. So, in case of eukaryote we have two regions the nucleus and the cytoplasm. On the other hand in prokaryote since they do not have a well defined nucleus the whole process takes place in the cytoplasm. So, it can be easily understand with the following diagram in the prokaryotic cell the transcription and translations are coupled. On the other hand in the case of eukaryotic cell the transcription and the translation is uncoupled that means they are taking place at the different places at the different time. So, now let us have the summary of the topics. The formation of RNA from DNA is called transcription. It involves initiation, elongation and termination. In eukaryotes three modifications are required to form functional mRNA. Thank you. Thank you.